Now back to the show. This is AM 650's The Law Show. Welcome back to the program. Uh, We have two lawyers from McMillan LLP back with us on The Law Show. Andrew Aguilar and Ryan Black are lawyers, and we're talking about the legal profession, becoming a lawyer. Perhaps there's someone in your life who's, well, talking about it. And how, how early in the game? Did you did you ever when you were kids go you know I I'd kind of like to be a lawyer because you know we all want to be firemen yeah. and, and soldiers and police officers and all that and it does does the lawyer ever cross your radar when you when you're growing up and did that ever enter into your yeah, consciousness it, I mean, at it, all it certainly didn't for me I didn't even cross my radar when I was in law school I didn't really know that I wanted to be a firm lawyer okay uh, but. Um, uh, no, I, it absolutely didn't. Um, uh, for some people, I know it has. Some people have just their entire lives wanted sure, to be a lawyer. Sure, absolutely. Um, uh, for me, that didn't happen. How about uh, you, I've Andrew? really enjoyed it. You know, Any myself, I never really life? thought about it, but I, I do, I've do. i heard numerous stories about how my grandfather, when I was quite young, had bought me a briefcase, and there's a picture of me uh, walking around with the briefcase and a little t- and a little suit on, <laughs> and, he, and he said at that time, you know, he's going to be a lawyer, so he, he perhaps had some premonition at that point. But, Isn't uh, that something? <laughs> but maybe it was deeper ingrained than I had thought, but nothing nothing uh, on the forefront. Ah, I'd yeah. like to see that picture sometime. <laughs> uh, tell us, talk to us a little bit about law school sure. uh, and, and the process. When you finish law school, School, you receive yeah. your degree, yeah. but you can't practice law. Right. It's like medicine. You you be, you receive an MD at the mm-hmm. end of med school, but you can't practice. You have to become an intern right. in medicine, and in law, you have to become an articling student. Right. So how does one become a student? How do you get selected by a firm uh, to, to become an articling student? How does that yeah. work? I mean, it's evolved quite a bit even since I was a law student. You know, when I was a law student, uh, people hired summer students, and then they went out to the market again, and then they hired articling students. And then from the articling students, people became lawyers. So law students work in law offices in right. their, their, during their summer vacations. Right. That's right. a good yes. foot in the door, that, right? That's definitely good foot in the door, oh, okay. and, and increasingly so, because over time, what law firms have typically done is now they hire their summer students Unless those students, I mean, unless there's some real reason not to, those are the students that come back as the articling students. So like our firm, for example, in Vancouver, doesn't even do an articling recruit anymore. We recruit them the year before as summer students. Ah. And they become our articling students who then become our associates. So like planning the student hiring process is really an exercise in looking three years in the future. Like who are we going to need to be lawyers? And I think, you know, law schools pay a big part in that as well. And there's, you know, a relationship going back and forth. Law schools have things, you know, I went to a law school that had a co-op program, so they were able to place us in various jobs, in law firms, in government, to, um, you know, assist people in finding that that articling position when they went through. Okay. And then there's also, you know, there's lots of programs like legal mentorship programs. There's a real, you know, ethos for mentorship in the law. And I think part of that comes from you having to be trained as a lawyer, to be called as a lawyer above the law school. So, you know, there's a lot of programs where more senior lawyers will meet with students and you know they can talk to them about how they would get hired and what what type of things that you know would be beneficial to them and you know we participate at Macmillan in all of those I'm you know I'm a legal mentor for a UBC student and you know and we, we've been able to have those type of relationships um, you know law firms are also looking for very skilled candidates so they go and you know they go to the various law schools and we're we're constantly going and doing interviews and hosting students for various events so they right. can kind of get to know us a little bit better but you know even for those who take the less traditional route you know there there are there are lawyers who can, you know, there are, they all run their own individual businesses, a lot of lawyers for smaller course, firms. So yeah. if you can't get into the bigger shop, sometimes, you know, it requires thinking outside of the box. But you can go and talk to some, you know, some small practitioners, so this some is, smaller this law firms. This is where I was going anyway, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but this is exactly my next question, which is if you are a graduate of a law school and looking for a place to go article and get that thing done so you can be called to the bar and get going – and there's no place to go. There's no place to go article. Right. What options are, the, are you left with then, Andrew? You, you started talking about uh, other possibilities to take care of that all-important uh, articling uh, exercise. Yeah, you know, there's lots of different areas within the government, I think, that people go into and lots of different departments in the government that have legal departments that, that take on students. Um, you and know, that you could still qualify. That you could still qualify okay. to become a lawyer. They okay. have various legal departments. So there's people who do that. There's people who work with sole practitioners or smaller law firms who, um, you know, while it's the law, the law is a changing profession. And while there may be, you know, there's been talk about how there's less jobs or it's more difficult to find articling positions. Often what they're talking about is also in the major, you know, for the big law firms, the traditional larger national law firms in the urban centers. But there still is a real thirst for lawyers and a demand for lawyers, you know, outside of the urban well, centers. Well, we're, we're hearing just recently about a shortage of right. lawyers and not just here in BC, but right yeah. across Canada. 
I mean, it's tough to, you know, it, obviously all, a lot of the business happens in the major urban centers. Sure. So that's where the lawyers tend to congregate, just like every other business. Uh, and so, um, you know, there is, I think, a demand for lawyers across, you know, certainly in the in the, uh, in the the less urban centers, but also uh, just across the country. I mean, I don't see the demand for legal services going down anytime soon. Law is getting more complex and business is getting more complex. Absolutely. Uh, what is changing is the kind of business model for how people deliver law. Right. Uh, and, uh, and so, uh, you know, firms are adapting to it, you know, Macmillan in doing the one office thing, for example. I mean, that's our attempt to find, you know, we're a Vancouver law firm, but I can get you a Toronto lawyer at our, you know, uh, on, on, on as if they were a Vancouver lawyer, working like with the same relationship you would have with a Vancouver lawyer. Right. And that can be really beneficial to someone who's well, dealing with someone with, where we don't have any expertise in the Vancouver uh, sure, office. Sure, or, or a yeah. Hong Kong lawyer. Right. right. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so you have that flexibility. Right. It's interesting because as we talk and we wrap up our conversation about uh, the legal profession and uh, two very enthusiastic members of it here advocating yeah. strongly on behalf of future lawyers. That's right. And, and the profession now is is, is is evolving slightly in that they're, you're now scanning the radar. You're looking at students, not articling yeah. students. You're looking right. even in advance of right. them just looking for that, the, 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 the creme de la creme yes. that you want to come to your firm. Yes, and, and it's a real exercise in, in knowing who we are and knowing what we, you know, per, trying, to, trying to forecast what we need. Uh, and so there's a lot, you know, there's a lot of decision making and a lot of internal kind of thought that goes into hiring students. Okay, final question to both of you. If yeah. I know someone who's a, a student right. who's contemplating a career in the law, but they don't know any lawyers, yeah. and they should sit down and talk to one or more. Yeah. How do I connect with a lawyer to connect my niece or my nephew with that career possibility? Well, I think LinkedIn is actually a, a great way to find. You know, it's very amazing. You know how quickly you're connected to someone. You you know a friend who knows a friend who's a lawyer or something like that. Okay. I would reach out to your friends and family first and say, like, Hey, do you have any? Do you know any lawyers that I could talk to? I'm thinking of this career. Mm -hmm. um, also, you know, just generally speaking. Uh, if you lawyers talk at a lot of events, lawyers show up at schools all the time to do career things. Uh, if you just take the time to go to those and talk to lawyers, lawyers are very willing to talk about themselves, <laughs> and they love they love to talk about what they do. <laughs> you should see we're, the yeah, smiles. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're passionate about it. The thing is, most lawyers are very passionate about what they do, and it really comes through. And so, if a student comes and says, "Hey, I'm thinking of doing what you do," how could we take that as anything other than a compliment? Andrew, you yeah, want to jump in? I've I've had a lot of instances where I've had people, you know, who's a, a friend of my mom or something like that who's got a kid who's interested in going into law school you know people you've dealt with I've had people on, on, on uh, you know on files or on opposite sides of files who have who've had a family member or something like that who wanted to chat with someone who's who's working in a you know a certain type of law firm and so and, you've got time for people and like I've that. always got time like that right, and the firm right. very much encourages it and uh -huh. we can go out for a coffee or something like that just to discuss what it's like to be a lawyer or what their thoughts are and I you know as, as a person coming up and thinking it's something I wanted to do I know I had a lawyer that I met up with who uh, was the father of a, of a person on my sister's uh, basketball team and I asked if I could have a meet with them and you know absolutely they said yes and I think that's a common experience so I don't think yeah. I think don't be afraid to ask so check your personal network and by yeah. gosh you probably do know a lawyer that's if you just think true. about it enough yes. and second and most importantly don't be shy pick right. up the phone or right. uh, get out there and, and make those uh, connections that's absolutely right Andrew Aguilar and Ryan Black excellent to see you both again Thanks. and uh, thank you for this uh, very informative chat about the legal profession Thanks. Rhett Robinson in the diner next, right here on AM 650.